I moved down to Tasmania four years ago. I started getting busier, so the great escape brought me here. Ended up in the Northwest with the idea to escape people. Pretty crazy weather pattern. Really windy, raining. Go somewhere super far off the beaten track where we're not going to run into anyone. Either side of Australia is so different. Yeah, this one's definitely the more unforgiving one and definitely not the friendliest. Yeah, I love that shit though. It's been moving around Australia trying to get away from people. That was my ideal situation. We got some waves out on this island, which was pretty rare. I mean, apparently it hadn't broken since the start of last year, so we got lucky. It was just insane to be in the middle of nowhere, surfing a little left with the crew, you know? could just get lost. It's a, it's a pretty difficult track. It's pretty green and fresh at the moment. But he made it! Yeah. Oh. Fresh. Definitely not the friendliest place I've ever stumbled upon. Serrated fucking like, rocks that are sticking out on the point and those are all like the old rocks that were underwater like a few hundred years, you know, hundreds of years ago. If it wasn't for the big white sin that I saw, straight off the get-go of getting out of the car, I would have been straight out there. And then all of a sudden this big tuna started jumping out of the water and it turned into to be this big bait ball right in the takeoff lineup. It was terrifying. Fins and tuna jumping and kind of like three hours away from any solid reception. And as we were setting up to drive away, we, I could see in Chip's eyes, he didn't know if we were making the right decision or not.
It just looked like an emergency waiting to happen. <laughs> that was just fucking rogue. The consequences were high. If you hurt yourself out there, you, you're in strife, are you even gonna die? Or be close to dying? <laughs> Felt pretty vulnerable. Felt like there was some big nasties just cruising around that point. Most spooked out I've felt in a very long time. I've started riding lots of other different boards since we've been together and single fins and mid-lengths and I'm just having so much more fun surfing. I feel like you've got to ride different crafts. It just smooths your style out. If you're on a high fire for your whole life, you have to surf high fire, you know? On this trip, I was riding a Bonza, which is like these two big set fins, kind of wedged out fins, and then you throw a single fin at the back. But when it's fun and small, like you just rip that big single fin out and then you got like a little finless kind of thing and you can slide around and it just frees up your surfing. It's just what I recommend, eh, is this experiment. Even if you have to get the angle grinder out and chop a fin in half, do it. <laughs> You're gonna have that much more fun. Girl is on the phone. Let's get by the water. Oh, come on. Oh, I know you really wanna. We're on jet skis, wearing suits, doing loop-de-loops. There's no rules, be yourself, burn the flag. You get your head back, you get your health. We go way back. I haven't seen him in about 10, 15 years. How do I explain Bo? Who is Bo Cram? Just a, just a chippy from the East Coast that gets stuck in West Oz, doesn't like paying for rent and decides to live in his van, basically. Carrying out on my boards and my tools, everything I need. Been on the road for like six months now, and yeah, it's made, made a little house. Does the job.
there's a local legend that I haven't seen in many years. Can't wait to catch up with him. Rye Creek, he's the best, he's the king of the west. And we're gonna catch up with him for a cold beer at the pub. Yeah.